All right, got a unique strategy on how to contribute even more into an HSA this year, but only if the circumstances align. I'll explain coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, so the HSA, such a valuable and versatile tool for your financial future, both for right now, but yes, your retirement and your financial future. And it used to be, now I've been doing this for 20 years or so. I know it probably looks like it, or maybe it doesn't, I don't know, but uh, I've been doing it for a while. And back when I needed to do a lot of explaining as to, hey, hey, here's what an HSA actually is. And as people started to understand it, the idea was, well, just uh, they'll, they'll just fund it whatever, they'll anticipate how much they think they'll spend on medical expenses this upcoming year, and that's how much they'll put into the HSA. That's how they used to think uh, about it, most people, okay? Then the thinking started shifting to, wow, this is a great tax deduction, and it's it's not use it or lose it, this is my money, so I'm gonna tr contribute as much as I possibly can, hopefully the maximum. So that was the next level of thinking. And now the thinking is, yes, I'm gonna contribute as much as I possibly can, but then I'm not gonna spend that money, I'm, in, I'm not gonna to touch it. When I have medical expenses come up, uh, I'll pay for them out of pocket, and then because that HSA money is now long-term, I'll invest that money for my financial future. And this video is not about that. I've done several about that shoeboxing strategy and investing your HSA, but it, it's more so that the there's been an evolution of thought as to what role the HSA plays in your financial life. Now I've stated the HSA is such a valuable tool, and the reason why is number one, these, these uh, HSA eligible or qualifying high deductible health plans are becoming more and more of the norm. I, I would say they're more popular, not because they're so cool, but just simply because of uh, managing health insurance costs, that sort of thing. So they're more prevalent out there. But then there's also this growing trend of the likelihood that taxes are gonna go up. Now I know the most recent tax change has like overarching tax brackets and all that was tax brackets went down. Um, but with the growing debt that we have, have here as a country, the likelihood that tax rates will either go up, I don't really think so, or new taxes will be created, yeah, I do think that, or some of today's current tax benefits will be limited based on income, yeah, I think that too. It makes, it makes the HSA uh, that much more attractive and more important for your financial life if you qualify. There's nothing else that I know of in the tax code where you can get pre-tax money in, that's right, you get a tax benefit on your contributions, tax delayed and deferred growth, and then can withdraw the money tax-free if used for medical expenses. Nothing else in the tax code that I know of is it pre-tax in, no tax on the way out. And, and even if you say, yeah, I'm not gonna use this for medical expenses or I built this thing up so much, when you get into retirement, age 65, you can pull the money out, still pay tax on it, just no penalty if you're not using it for medical expenses. So, and plus with the statute of limitations, like there is none, you can reimburse yourself from your HSA for qualifying medical expenses that you already paid out of pocket at any time in the future. I'm assuming they're gonna change that rule at some point, but just makes the HSA an unbelievable tool for your financial future if you're using it right. So then here's a new idea or a creative idea maybe you haven't thought of. If you're in the camp of, I, I wanna try and put as much money as possible in this HSA. I'm trying to maximize as many tax shelters as possible and I've got extra cash available to do that. So if that's you, and if you've got a young adult that is still on your health insurance because they're not yet age 26. Some of the health insurance pros on our team here pointed out this strategy, this strategy to me and I thought, oh, this is, this is amazing. And once again, I'll just tell you, this is why it's so crucial that you take a, a comprehensive financial approach to your finances and, and that you're working with a collaborative team of professionals. This idea would have, I'm gonna say, never come up or at least not come up at this time if we didn't have financial professionals all working together, creatively thinking about, hey, how can we, how can we come up with solutions to, to financial problems and financial needs? So kudos to the team uh, here at KFG, the health insurance team, for coming up with this idea. I just, I just get to share it. So if that's you, if you're looking around saying, I've gotta, I've gotta try to stuff as much money as possible into tax shelters, and I've got this young adult that's not yet age 26, and they're still, they're still on my health insurance because I'm allowed to keep them there, 
here's an idea for you. What about transitioning that young adult off of your group, off of your family health insurance coverage and onto their own individual coverage? Why would you do that? Well, depending on the circumstance, if, if they're the last child that's still on your health insurance, that would allow your monthly premium, hopefully, to go down a little bit because you'd be switching from family to, to employee plus spouse or something like that, right? Um, they would actually have to incur some premium payment because they now would have their own coverage. But here's, here's a couple, here's some things, uh, some perspective on this. Number one, if they are a young professional, but they're not making that much money, they may be able to qualify for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act or the marketplace on the exchange, whatever, healthcare.gov is basically what I'm talking about. They could qualify likely for, for health insurance at a reduced rate, get some premium tax credits if their income is low enough. So this strategy might reduce your premium a little bit and might not cost very much for their new premium for their health insurance, okay? So for your, for your family coverage, because it's still you and your spouse or, or whatever, you and, and, and kids, for your family coverage, you're allowed to contribute the, the amount for 2022, which is $7,300, okay? But then that, that young adult child, that is now on their own health insurance plan that you make sure is HSA eligible, they're also able to contribute an individual amount, which for 2022 is 3,650 bucks. So because you went from having them on your family plan, which it doesn't matter how many kids are on there, if it's a family plan, your family contribution limit applies to the HSA, which I said 7,300 bucks, but now they've got their own plan and they're able to contribute another 3650. So between the two, okay, you could contribute almost $11,000. Now you might say, "Now wait a second, my kid, my young adult, if they're not making that much money or maybe they're still in high school or maybe working part-time or I have no idea. Maybe they're a grad school. I I have no idea." Well, they don't really have the income to contribute the maximum to their HSA. So this doesn't really help. No, 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 I know. It really depends on the circumstances whether this would make sense for you. But if you as a parent or you as the adult have resources, you're trying to figure out how can I get as much money as possible into tax sheltered accounts, you could then fund out of your own dollars, you could max out your child's HSA their HSA and allow that money to be invested and grow for their financial future. So if you're playing the long game and you're looking at multiple generational financial planning, tax planning, consider this idea. Now, it's not for everyone because not everyone has the resources. Well, number one, not eligible. Not everyone is eligible to fund an HSA. Not everyone has a high deductible health plan that's HSA eligible, okay? So that's number one. Number two, those of you that do might not have the cash flow to say, yeah, I'm gonna maximize this thing and I'm not gonna touch it, okay? And number three, you might not wanna do that based on your overall financial situation. That may not be necessary or important for you. You might have some other financial priorities that you need to take care of before you'd even consider that, okay? You might not have an adult child that is still on your health insurance, and you might not have an adult child that's still on your health insurance where it would make sense to peel them off and get them their own plan. So lots of reasons why this may not work for you, but for the few of you that it does work, wow. You now have an extra you know, 3650 3, that you're able to contribute into, the, into an HSA for your family member, for your child, each and every year from here on out for eternity and allow that money if they're able to you know, manage their cash flow and, and not dip into it, you could invest that money and have it grow tax-free for their financial future for decades. Huge, huge way of doing some multi-generational tax planning, maybe even estate planning as well, through some creative health insurance uh, strategy. So work with your CFP on that, and I'll reiterate again, make sure that CFP is taking a compre comprehensive approach to your financial life and working with the other financial professionals uh, that, that are in your life, giving advice and so on, so that they can collaborate and give uh, provide that creativity to solving your financial problems. So if you have a CFP on your team, wonderful, work with them. If you don't have a CFP that's offering that, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corehorn.com, that's corehorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.